is in place. We'll so see. We'll see um, what happens. Yeah. So for now, I'm still sending the information that the service pack for is installed, but uh, John is right. I don't run trend micro antivirus software in the VMware session. So as it is in, in the requirement, I should be quarantined and receive the mesh infected. In and fact, what you see here is, um, of course, I'm an honest guy. I also visualize these messages, not only that I'm going in. And now we know policy is working. And I show it to you on the router, just to make sure. OK, just switch to the router, make sure you, you all. So you can actually see it on the router, too. Um, so you not only see a clean layer, but here you can actually see it's uh, dot uh, 70 is infected, right? So it shows on the router. Um, OK. OK, so, uh, so here I am. I'm the winner. I got him out of my network. OK. Um, um, give me one minute. So <laughs> 30 seconds. OK, so I will hurry up. Um, so the, the next part was, OK, um, I have to support a software. So we did another um, research and figured out the parameters that uh, are used with Trend Micro. And what I did, um, I wrote my own Trend Micro plugin. So I also have to copy it and replace the original one. And Trend Micro produces smaller codes in Cisco. We are up to 140 KB, but I'm still smaller, still 20 KB. So I replaced the DLL. And next thing is, um, of course, I have to configure it. So I'm using, again, my configuration utility. And what you see here is um, there's a part of the Trend Micro plugin. That are all the parameters that are supported by the Trend Micro plugin for the CTA. And here's the protection that is disabled at the moment. Yeah. So as antivirus protection is a requirement, I switch that to enabled. Of course, save the settings again. And now let us see what's happening. Okay. And again, my client is healthy. And that's really interesting because when you're trying to attack a network, of course, um, you will install a lot of hacking tools. Yeah? Actually, antivirus software is also capable of identifying hacking tools. So um, running an antivirus software on a system that you want to use for hacking is a hard option. Normally, you disable it, or you have to uh, implement a lot of exceptions. So this way, yeah. much more easier. And like that, I mean, we just showed it to you with the uh, Cisco host uh, plugin and the Trend Micro plugin. But just as that, it works with any. I mean, you can just simply control what software you send. That's the post just spoofing, right? We, d we control what software we send. Um, we can send anything we want, and it's not at all related to what is actually installed or not installed. It's a, just a complete control. Um, and that's basically it, I guess. Yeah. And uh, ju just a few words. Um, the architecture is, uh, has an interface for all third-party vendors. So the only thing you have to do is um, look at a text file to see which information is transported communicated to the server, yeah, and use a template for the DLL meant that information yeah, and send it. Yeah. So um, it's, um, I think, about 30 minutes, uh, maybe 60 minutes work uh, to do that for a third-party plugin yeah. Yeah, just, to support it. Yeah, just remember, I told you at the beginning that you know, when you install a plugin, um, the plugin um, basically is described in an, in an in file, in a plain text file says, OK, this information is transmitted, and it's a IP address, or it's a date format, and stuff like that. Um, and basically, that is always installed with the, um, um, with the plugin itself. So if you install the plugin, you get this text file, and the text file basically tells you what you need to implement in the DLL. That's it. Um, so that's, and so if, once we have a template process, you can quite easily add whatever you want. OK, I, I think, think that's we are done. Thanks for your patience. Um, uh, thanks for staying with us, even though we rushed you through it. Um, we just wanted to make up some time because we started yeah. late. If, maybe if you have time for questions. OK. OK, so I'll ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> OK.
So who wants who wants to win this? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you have just shown a demo for breaking into Cisco NAC. Yeah. So what uh, could be the possible solution from your side? Uh, okay, that's a very good question. I guess we have the winner um, <laughs> um, because I'm not not really sure about about a good answer. Um, if you talk about network admission control, and now I'm not only talking about Cisco, um, I am not sure if it's a good approach to security at all. I mean, there I've yet a couple of different slides which I haven't showed, but I'm quite willing to talk to you on a general level about Cisco net or about network admission control if you're interested in that, um, because we've done also research on other network admission control systems, and I have some general concerns. Um, and 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 basically with Cisco NAC, I mean or just one, one, one important thing is, I believe that um, you, as long as the hardware and the operating system is not trustworthy, you cannot trust the information it passes. So basically, what you need to do is you make trustworthy hardware, think TPM or something like that, make a trustworthy operating system, um, and authenticate the client. Right? And that's basically what I would say would make sense. Uh, then you could probably trust the information. But on a general level, and maybe they just give me one minute and I'll explain you one of my general concerns. Okay, um, as we've seen, network admission control, and I'm not now talking about Cisco, but general, is um, addressing two problems mostly, patch level and antivirus. Um, why do we have patch level, uh, why, why do we have, we have patches and antivirus? Basically, because users go to websites where they shouldn't be going. Users double click on every um, attachment, and programmers basically write bad code or insecure code. Don't Make don't mistakes. Know. Make mistakes, okay. I, I'm not a programmer, so I can just bash them, right? <laughs> um, so, um, and then we have these patch management processes in our companies. Um, so, and we have antivirus rollout, signature rollout processes. Um, in a, in, a, in a good world, um, basically these processes would work. If these processes would work, we would not need to check if they work. Maybe what NAC does, it checks if it works, right? Um, in an even better world, we wouldn't need these, those processes for patching an antivirus because there wouldn't be any software flaws and users wouldn't double click every stupid email attachment and wouldn't go to websites where they shouldn't be going, right? So basically, we have a NAC addresses a pros procedural pro uh, problem, patch management problem, antivirus signature update problem. These problems exist because we need to patch and roll out antivirus. We need to patch and roll out antivirus because programmers make mistakes and users make mistakes. Right? So we have multiple levels. So now if you have dollar, 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 where do you want to spend it? At that end or at that end? What makes more sense, in your opinion? Right? That's, that's my general opinion on, um, on NAC. Uh, so what, what we always say is um, NAC isn't a security solution, it's a compliance solution. Yeah. Uh, right. Measure uh, the, the level, but don't make decisions based on the information. Yeah. Yeah? Dan Kaminsky in Las Vegas uh, said a really good sentence. Um, don't expect um, that a software um, that is not designed to work as security software doesn't work as security, as software. security software. If it's not a security yeah. solution, don't be surprised if it doesn't operate as a security solution. Right? Okay, maybe we, should have an, maybe we should have a second question so we at least have yeah. a choice of <laughs> who can win. This is this has nothing to do with firewalls. Basically, uh, basically because why it's. <laughs> um, you, you are protecting a network with NAC where you want to grant access, right? So this will be sort of like um, in place either inside the network, so then, then it's a uh, protection for like consultants and visitors and stuff like that, or when you access the network from the outside, it'll be like on the remote access boxes on the VPN. Of course, then you have authentication on the VPN, so you, you have a set, sort of I, I said before that um, one mitigating control would be have a client authentication in a VPN scenario. If you have strong client, authenti uh, client authentication, you have a mitigating control. And the specific attack vectors are normally, um, or is normally communication that is allowed. 
yeah. through the firewall because of business requirements. Yeah. So right. that's the reason really okay. why it's not a question of high configuration or use of firewalls. Any other, uh, or are we out of time? Yeah, maybe just, just la one last question. And then one last question, anyone? Anyone want to win the software? No one? <laughs> oh, okay, here, on the left side, a lady. Um, so I, I, on, on a, it's just, maybe can I have a mic? Did you base your research because of a particular security flaw? Uh, oh, why, why did we choose Cisco NAC? Yeah. Okay, we chose Cisco NAC because at the time um, uh, we got started. Uh, basically, I was sitting at a, we, both of us were sitting at a customer, and he said, oh, well, they're sort of approaching us and wanting to show us, and what do you think about NAC? And I started thinking about NAC. And at that point, which is about two years ago, that we started thinking about NAC, um, basically, the Cisco NAC framework was the leading framework of all. Right, right now, the market has changed. I mean, there's Microsoft is NAP out, and there's um, McAfee with a policy enforcer, and there's the Trusted Computing Group with Trusted Network Connect, and so forth with its solution. And everyone has a NAC solution right now. But at that time, there wasn't much uh, besides uh, Cisco. That's basically the reason. Yeah, OK. I think okay. this will be the You last will be the judge. Uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> you will be the judge. Uh, okay, I, I, w I would vote for the first question. Okay, um, he's the judge. Okay, well, okay, thank uh, you. Con uh, congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you very much. So, uh, a round of applause for our speakers. Thank you. Thank you. And you can catch up outside if you want. Bye-bye.